So maybe this is you. You're working a nine to five at a respectable job. You're getting them bills paid, but you're not happy. You got ideas, stories you want to tell, movies you want to make. You've got a calling to do something creative. But every time you think of pursuing that calling, something stops you. Maybe it's lack of money, lack of time, lack of connections. You know, these are just excuses. The real reason, it's fear. Fear of failure. If I chase this dream, am I going to wind up broke and starving, living under a bridge somewhere in Georgia? This fear is what stops you. You've probably made some affirmations, gave yourself a few pep talks, and now you're wondering why none of that seems to work. Well, it didn't work because, uh, it's bullshit. You can't overcome fear. It's a waste of time. This old school way of thinking goes against everything we know about how the brain works. And two, you got to stop shaming yourself for being afraid. That's like shaming yourself for having a liver. Makes no sense. Most of this old school fear conquering, fear shaming babble encourages you to suppress emotions. We don't want to do that. Causes more problems later. Bad form. Fear isn't just an emotion, it's an adaptive phenomenon. It's there for a reason. When we perceive a threat, this little guy here, the amygdala, triggers our fear response, preparing us for either a fight or to take flight. But the plot thickens. This process doesn't just occur with perceived mortal danger. It occurs with any perceived threat, social, financial, etc. Non-mortal threats might elicit a fear response of self-doubt, hypercritical thinking, perseverative thinking, or dwelling on all the possible ways things can go wrong. This phenomenon is called the negativity bias. It is your fear response, busy at work forecasting all of the bushes that tiger might be hiding in. Your brain is just doing its job. It's trying to make sure you don't get eaten. Trying to think your way through fear is like putting the cart before the horse. It doesn't work. But there is one thing you can do. I think it's time for some cognitive reappraisal, which is a fancy term for reframing, which is another fancy term for let's look at stuff from another angle. <laughs> At some point in your wonder years, you were afraid of the dark. Mom and dad gave you pep talks about fear. Nothing to fear but fear itself, yada, yada, yada. Did any of that jawbone and do anything for you as a kid? Probably not. The only thing that worked, they pulled the nightlight out, they tucked you in, they flipped the switch, and they closed the door. That first night, man, scary. The second night, less so. The third night, even less, until one day. It ceased to be an issue. You're not afraid of the dark anymore. You became desensitized to the stimulus of lying in a dark room. This is a phenomenon called habituation. When someone is repeatedly exposed to the same stimulus, the psychological impact of that stimulus diminishes with each repeat occurrence. You didn't overcome that fear by mind f***ing it and making affirmations. Your parents forced you to take action despite your fear, and through experience you learned that the darkness had no teeth. The same thing happened to you in dating. Think of the very first time you asked someone you were crushing on out on a date and got rejected. That stung like a mother, right? Felt like the end of the world. Fast forward some years later and now, if somebody goes to you on Tinder, eh, you might say to yourself, I wasn't that interested anyway. Habituation strikes again. Through experience, you've learned that rejection is just a part of the dating game. Same stimulus, repeat occurrence, diminished psychological impact. Habituation is part of the reason why greedy people can't ever seem to make enough money. Once they've normalized the feeling of having a lot of money, then they have to make even more money to feel like they have a lot of money. But incidentally, the more money they make, the less of a psychological impact having money has. I thought I would be over the moon when I hit 100,000 subscribers, but when it finally happened, it was oddly uneventful. I remember feeling way more excited about getting my first comment from a random stranger way back when I started. Habituation strikes again. By the the time I hit 100K, I already had a whole bunch of magical moments over the years. So what does this mean for you? Well, we can habituate anything, even success. The first time you tried ice cream was amazing. Eat it every day for a month and see how you feel. Every stimulus loses impact with repeat exposure. So what if you habituate your fear of failure? Huh. 
How do we do that? All you have to do to start the process of habituation is to take action. Just make lots of small baby steps. Do a little something every day that moves you a little closer to the goal. You're still gonna have all of those fears, doubts, and concerns, bro, bro. But the more you expose yourself to those fears, you diminish the psychological impact that your fear response has on you. Probably not the most eloquent answer you were hoping to hear, <laughs> but I can say from personal experience, it is the only thing that works. Once you're like doing the thing, you'll be too busy thinking about doing the thing to think about all the other things. There will be plenty of occasions throughout your career that will incite fear. You're gonna have to step outside of your comfort zone more times than you can imagine. If we don't learn how to manage these fears in a healthy way, we're gonna have a rough go of it. The real goal here is to reduce the psychological impact that your fear response has on you. The only way to do that is to expose yourself to the very thing that you're afraid of. You've got to do it afraid. Walking with fear is like a muscle. You have to build it. The more reps you get at getting yourself to do things you're afraid to do, the easier it gets. This allows you to challenge yourself and take even more terrifying risks later on down the road. You've already managed fear several times in your life. If you did it then, you can do it again. The am I good enoughs, the people pleasing, the imposter syndrome, those thoughts never completely go away, but with experience, they get a lot quieter. Things will not go as you planned. They never do. But smooth seas do not create skilled sailors. You will always learn way more from your failures than you will your successes. I mean, how many times did you fall learning how to walk? Disappointments and setbacks, you just got to look at it as a part of the game. It's just a part of the, it's just a part of learning. Do not let fear hold you back from your calling. You're not going to be happy until you do it. Just start, create your art.